Hi, it's Faces Tech. This is the granddaddy of projects. Look how tiny, look how big it is against the uh, Retro Zero. Um, the Retro Zero is, was the base, bare, bare bones minimum um, Raspberry Pi uh, Retro Pi project that I could probably do. Um, I've souped this one up completely. Start with the screen. I've got a 3.2 inch uh, screen. It is the only the uh, 320 by, I don't know, yeah, 320 by 240. But I think it actually looks pretty crystal clear, to be honest. It looks really nice. Um, I've teamed that up with um, with some um, tablet speakers. Um, with I've gone with the with this uh, retro uh, zero. I just went had the speakers basically um, connected straight to the GPIO. But with this, I've gone with the filter circuit, a basic filter circuit that most people use, uh, and then a Pam um, dual uh, stereo amp. That's quite nice with a uh, headphone jack and a uh, volume wheel. I think there's the volume wheel actually is off for Game Boy Color. Um, and that's the, uh, it's basically got the Retro Pi, uh, come with the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, A+, plus, which, you know, just for the form factor, I know you lose half the RAM of the 3 B+, plus, but I don't, with emulators, you're not really that bothered about RAM. It doesn't really, it's mostly uh, GPU and CPU. Um, the controller wise I've kind of um, been experimenting with a lot of controllers um, the latest one that I experimented with the DS uh, using DS Lite membrane and uh, plastic tops but whilst I was doing this one I used uh, for some reason I just used just happened to have official uh, leftover DS Lite uh, silicone buttons and uh, plastic bits um, but when I actually did move on to this project which I just used the same same thing with the DS Lite, um, as you can see it is virtually the same size, um, but when you use the knockoff ones they're actually a little bit thinner and the silicone is just a little bit thinner and the buttons don't stick up enough um, past the uh, FR4 um, with the uh, M3 um, nuts of spacers, so I had to use a, uh, on the just on the button side I had to use a DS, a 2DS, um, you know the big flat, big flat cheap one. I used the membrane out of that because I actually had one that I was preparing I just slipped it in. It just so happened to work. Uh, with the D-pad I've just gone with the same uh, D-pad as the DS Lite one and I've got the uh, nice uh, soft touch silicone buttons uh, with the start that you don't really ever use them because the reason I did, um, you do use them but you don't obviously use them that often but the reason I went away from using these uh, as for the main buttons is when you're playing a game you do get like a bit of a indentation after a while in your fingers so I wanted a, a proper nice and it's just a nicer touch having the silicone membrane <clears throat> with the uh, I've decided to have L and L1 R2 L2 and R1 buttons on there they kind of like weirdly uh, I've got them set at like about 45 degree angle just in the back so you kind of have to like sandwich your fingers in between the between there but actually it's quite quite comfy it does work quite well because on the uh, Retro Zero I actually uh, had them on the back which was okay but um, it was kind of just a, a half step measure um, and then going around to the power board at the back um, this is all completely modular because I decided to do it like this because if I messed the screen up or the control up they would like with this one it's on the same board so I'd have to respin the entire board with this I just have to change the controller board and you could put in like a wacky controller, you could put in like a, a tiny mini um, uh, arcade board or something like that if you wanted to. You could just mix it up how you want. Um, so I've got the power board at the bottom here, which is the Power Boost 500C, which I think, why don't you just go for the 1000, but you know, why not? I think the difference is about, I think these are about 12 quid and then the 1000 is about 20. So there is quite a bit of difference. And you have I've not seen the volume, um, you know, the lightning, volume thing the, the low voltage spike so I thought well you know if it works it works I also added a USB-C uh, charging port just on the side to see if you wanna if you've got either cable you've still got the micro USB uh, on the side so you can charge from either or <coughs> I did also have the footprint for a female USB so you could charge up your phone from the power bank if you wanted to it's about 3000 milliamp hour battery so you know you can you could do that but it didn't really fit and I can I didn't really feel the need to use it that much but it's there if you want it if I was gonna you know need it I could just add one in uh, I've also 
Um, got around the top here the exposed HDMI and the power for the Pi. So you could actually hook this up to your telly because the driver board that I'm using, basically if it um, detects, if it's hooking up to a screen it'll put a higher res uh, output um, and also um, charge off the power because you know if you want it you don't really want to be worried about battery uh, battery life whilst you're connected to your telly but also I, I did whilst I was kind of experimenting around I thought oh no wait you could actually back charge the uh, power board or the um, battery board from the Pi so I've added a switch that let you toggle if you're connected to Pi the Pi power or you're connected to battery power so you just flick it the other way and then just turn it on and off uh, I had to make up a custom USB cable um, on the special board that just uses a minimal amount of space um, just hooks around over there and then it comes around the side here uh, and then into the controller so basically I used the um, Arduino controller because I couldn't find <laughs> I couldn't find um, a way to do the G these uh, US, uh, analog sticks via the GPIO so I kind of cheated and went with what I knew um, but that is it really, It's um, I'll show you a bit of gameplay now actually, that's probably what everyone's been waiting to see. PlayStation runs great. <clears throat> Nintendo 64 obviously, you know, it's a pie, it's gonna, doesn't really run, but you know, it does kind of. Some of the games done like, you know, Mario 64 and the like, but uh, PlayStation just runs, it just runs everything. Real nice, let's load it up and let's go. Is really uh is really nice the sound. It does make a hell of a difference adding the uh, amp uh, and the uh, filter circuit as well. It does make it a lot nicer. And adding the volume wheel because on this one I just use the software. Uh, shortcut button to mute it and things, but on this you can actually hardware mute it, which is quite nice. But I think this is probably the end of the line for me with uh, RetroPie projects. Um, there's nothing really, they probably could go up to uh, Raspberry Pi 4, but I just think it's kind of, um, you kind of go into the realm of madness doing that because the battery draw um, and you know, you're gonna have to have this has got a 2000 milliamp hour battery, so this probably only gets you about. Um, <clears throat> for about three or four hours use out of it so if you and that's quite you know a moderate to uh, you know it doesn't really sip, sip, just sip, sips the power of this but if you go to a Raspberry Pi 4 that is a, another beast again and you've got all the uh, different architecture with the different screens it kind of it all needs to be worked out but you know don't I'm not writing them off but I'm just saying it's going to take a while because I see you do see a lot of people asking on the um, retro uh, RetroPie uh, subreddit, like when is there going to be a handheld? And you know, I think you are wasting your time. But anyway, as usual, in the link in the description for the blog post and the board files, if you want to build one, um, I think it is quite nice. It's got um, I've used I normally use about three mil thick acrylic on the bottom, but I've I accidentally ordered five because I thought that's what I usually use. But I'm quite actually pleased I did because it is quite thick, quite nice, and um, when he's charging there, it's quite. Uh, it's quite thick and sturdy, and also, in coincidentally, it does fit in a DS Lite, uh, a 3DS case, which you know is great because it's. Um, I found I did find a case for my um, Retro Zero as well, which is quite nice. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.